Hey, I love starting up companies. Um, it's almost like a sport to me. Not that I'm trying to make as many companies as I can, but I really do enjoy it. I enjoy the process of working with ideas, my own ideas, the ideas of others, create concepts and eventually business models that are sustainable, at least on paper. Take some of these ideas, I put them into companies. And yes, during my past 16, 17 years working, I have been involved in about 20 companies. I have founded 16, 17 of them myself and co-founded a few of them. Now, being a parallel serial entrepreneur, a lot of people come up to me and they ask, you know, Jacob, is it smart? Is it, is it really the best way to do it, to run five companies at the same time? That's what I'm doing right now. I have five active companies. I have two other companies in very early startup. And, well, it will probably become seven within a few months. So, doing multiple startups, of course, for a lot of people, could mean that you don't have focus on anything. But I actually try to explain to these people, and I listen to these people, I, I, at least I try to listen, um, and because th these people that come up to me are successful people, people that built companies, people that made fortunes on companies that they built, but they built one company, they stayed with it maybe for eight years or 10 years or 12 years, and they make the big cash out. They felt successful, of course, doing that. I think they're successful because they did what they did. But looking to myself, I may have another perception of success because my perception of success is more, am I in control? Am I deciding what I'm doing Monday morning? Do I get to start up a new company if I want to? And, and this for me, of course, I want to make a living. I have been able to make a decent living out of starting up companies for the past years. So, but, but of course, this, this way of being in control for me, to be the one to decide what is going on, this for me is success. This is what is driving me to work every day and keep working with these ideas, keep working with new entrepreneurs. So is it smart to run multiple companies? For me it is. It may not be for someone else who would like to do one company at the time. This guy, Richard Branson, I'm a big fan of this guy because he's the startup of all startup guys. He was, he's been involved in about 400 companies. He did this in about 50 years. He started up when he was 12 years old. If he were to have had whatever it is in English, to build these companies one by one, it would have taken him between 1,000 and 3,000 years to complete uh, the work that he did in 50 years. So I think it's fair to say that Mr. Branson, at least, he has been extremely successful. He has built small companies, big companies. He has closed down companies. He tried everything. So I guess it's, it's very much up to you. It's up to me to say, is this a smart thing to do? For me, it is. I know half of you out here, at least, are students. And you need to start up now. Not because this is a competition of who makes the first and who makes the most startups, but right now is your time. You're young, you have energy, and you're gonna, you, you're gonna need that energy because running a startup is nothing like going to the bank at nine o'clock in the morning and going home at five o'clock at the end of the day or six or whatever it is. Running a startup is it's more like a 24 seven job. It's something that you do every day, also on Saturdays, also on Sundays, also during night. It's a full time employment. But now is your time. You will never come in a position in your life that is better than where you are right now. That may sound amazing, but it is really true. A lot of us start up companies, at least I know I did. When I was 24, I started up my first company. I did it to become financially 
independent, create a fortune and oh, lean back. But the fact is, the older we get, the more complicated the life will get. We get a house, a car, a second car, a second house. We get kids, we have wives, we have ex-wives, we have maybe kids here and there and all over. Now your life, running that life right now is expensive. It's extremely expensive. And the flexibility that you have right now when you're 22, 23, 24, you can live on a thousand euro a month, maybe even less. This flexibility is probably the most uh, what is it, highest valued asset that you will have for your startup because you don't need to take a lot of money out of your startup every month. And if you wait until, I don't know, 40, where am I right now? You may be in a situation where the risk of actually doing that startup, the risk of risking all those houses and all those cars and all those insurances that you need to pay, that risk is simply too high and you're not going to do it. So you got to do it now. Second up, I think you're a natural born to this. We're all born to startup companies. We started out by, you know, hunting, getting our food, whatever we had to do to survive. Starting up a company is easy. It's really, it's not very complicated. Probably some of you study entrepreneurship. I know I have been speaking to some of you at some different events. And I want to say that I don't believe actually that you can study entrepreneurship. I'm sorry. I think there is only really one way, that is to jump into it. Just like when you want to have your first kid. Because there is no school, there is no academy for how to become a parent. It's something that we do. You get pregnant. You panic, probably. <laughs> Stomach grows, you panic even more. The day the baby comes out, it's all over. You panic, but within a day, within a week, a few weeks only, it's like, it's so easy. It's, it's natural. It's like I've been doing it for years. And we don't need to learn this. We just do it because it's very easy. And this is the same with the startup. You cannot learn what it is to actually run a startup and do a startup project without doing it. You can learn about Excel sheets and income, cost. I can tell you right now, cost will come faster, income will come slower, employees want more, and they go on vacation too. So it's a mess to run this startup, but it really, you know, it's that easy. It's just do it. This is not Jean-Claude Van Damme. He may look like him and he may hit like him. But he's my representation of passion. And I believe that passion is probably one of the most important ingredients in your startup. You're going to need that passion to motivate yourself to get up in the morning, to go back and do it again and again and again every day because it usually takes longer than we expect to build that startup. You're going to need that passion when you're doing your sales to your first clients. You're going to need that passion when you go and try to convince people that already have a steady job, maybe, to come and join your startup, which is extremely insecure. So passion is a fundamental thing of running a startup. Without the passion, I don't think there will be a startup. Even the greatest of ideas will be killed by people that are not passionate about doing it. And a medium good idea can go to the sky with a team of passionate people. So why am I bringing in this guy? He's a very old and very dear friend of mine. We went to school together since we were six years old. And he's a karate fighter. He hasn't done any startup yet, but he's extremely passionate about karate. And he's been doing it, I think, since fifth grade, 10, 11, 12 years old, I don't remember. We all thought it was a little bit funny that he was doing karate because we played soccer and badminton and handball or whatever uh, we had to do. 
but he wanted to do karate. And pretty quickly it showed that he was really, really good at karate. He was not just really good, he was actually the best. He became one of the best karate fighters in the world when he was on top. He's 40 just like me, so he retired from fighting. But now, 10 years ago, he opened an academy because he wanted to take some of that passion and some of that knowledge from training four or five hours a day for 20 years and pass this on to young people and take them at early age and teach them how to do karate in the right way. Now, he has the most winning karate academy in Denmark. I know Denmark is a small place, but he's not only in Denmark, he is now expanding with his concept to Iceland and into Germany, where karate academies are adopting his way of uh, fighting, his way of teaching. And next year, hopefully, he's going to really start making a living. He's already living partly of his karate now, but he wants to live of this karate. And it's impossible. It's not a professional sport. It is an amateur sport. So he's going to keep working, and he's been doing it for 25, 30 years, doing that karate. And eventually now, he will take what is he's most passionate about and bring this in to become his startup, his income. And this is why no one can compete with this guy in a few years, because he's got everything. He's got the experience, he's got the passion, and he's got the technique right. When we create ideas as entrepreneurs or inventors or architects, we have to be a little bit unrealistic. It's just part of our DNA. We have to be able to dream and say, this could happen, couldn't it? Yeah, it could. And, and keep saying that, yes, I could become the greatest. Actually, I could become the number one in the world. I could maybe potentially get all these customers to pay me this money every month or every day or whatever it is to make this business model work. And I think this is very much like our kids that grow up, they play soccer in the schoolyard, they all want to be these two guys right now, Ronaldo, Messi, whatever the names are out there. The chance for some of these guys to actually be one, number one in the world is very, very little. So they, they have to just keep that being unrealistic in their mind that they can, I can become Messi but set realistic goals on the way. So, okay, make it to the first team. Oh, all right, that's the first goal. Make it maybe to a better club. Make it to, I'm going to make money off of this. I'm going to go into an international club. One day, maybe I will go to Manchester United. Who knows? But set realistic goals on the way, because if we don't do that, it's going to be a very long journey to make it all the way, because 98% of us will be disappointed. So in your startup, if you can make an idea, or create an idea, make a business model, launch a company, have income so you can sustain your own income, I think you're already a good success. If you can pass that on and actually start hiring people, creating a company, three people, five people, eight people, it doesn't really matter. You're now a huge success. You're now contributing to society. You are creating stuff, and this is what it's all about. You will now be a success. Thank you.